All right, today we're going to talk a little bit more about feed forward, contrast it against the old set point weight, and talk about what the heck is smart feed forward. Okay, so on the left and the right, we have uh, a simple roll, line of sight roll with set point weight versus the same roll with feed forward. It's obviously two different flights, but um, try to have the, about the same roll rate. You can see that the, the green line here is the uh, commanded roll rate. So what we have on the graphs is P term, I term, D term, gyro, the commanded roll rate, and then the PID sum is what's actually driving the quad to, to produce a roll. So you can see the inherent issue in both is that, in this quad at least, this is kind of a heavy quad. So a light, high-powered quad, it might not be as bad. But you can see the gyro is lagging the commanded set point. So it's not following it. And hence where the I term accumulates, which then I term relax comes in to solve. So when you have a big gap here, that's where I term relax is the most effective because this is a consistent error, so I term starts to accumulate but it, it doesn't anymore with I term relax, so that solved that problem. Uh, you can see over here on feed forward, it's better. This is using this, this equation for determining what the feed forward is. So this is a feed forward about 150 on the roll axis, which if you look at the, the D gain for this quad is 40. So it was D gain divided by 26 times the set point weight of one times 100 gave me a, a 155. It was around 154 or something, so I just went up to 155. So you can see the differential here is D set point weight. What that did is kind of relaxed the D term. See how the D term here opposes? And that's the normal characteristic of a D term in a PID controller. It opposes all motion like I talked about before. So D set point weight, it relaxed that, and that was the kick. That's the, the D term kick part, where it relaxed it or kicked it. Uh, you can see it's kicking it here a little bit because it's above above zero and uh, it's helping it enter the roll. Here the D term is opposing it the entire time but we have now the feed forward coming in which is this dark burnt orange uh, thicker line here coming in to to push um, and help push with the P term to hit into that and obviously it's adjustable so it's, it's another term it's another gain in the in the PID controller. Okay, so set point weight, this is kind of how it works. You have your set point, which does have some smoothing involved, either R interpolation or RC smoothing. They both have about the same latency uh, of one frame, uh, RC frame. And then you have the gyro, which also has filtering, and that can range on the gyro from two to five milliseconds. You can look at my uh, calc on that. That goes into the PID controller. It derives an error. So the, the two, you know, the difference between these two things derives a PID error and then that's what the P term pushes against and also the, the D term honestly opposes that PID error. It's opposing all motion as the P term's pushing, the D term is trying to fight against that and uh, with set point weight, kind of D term gets relaxed so it doesn't do that as much. But do notice if you're using the D term to do that, there's an additional D term filtering uh, that adds some latency of two to three milliseconds. Again, you can look at the spreadsheet. So with feed forward, again, you have the set point. You still have the same delay here from set point to the gyro, deriving the pit error. But do note, it, the feed forward, the F term doesn't have any of that gyro latency. It's measuring directly off the slope It'll, many people will say it's the derivative. Whenever you hear derivative, it's a fancy term to say slope. It's the magnitude of the slope. That's all derivative means. So a higher slope will give you a higher derivative value, and then that's pushed, uh, measured against or uh, multiplied by the gain and so, so on and so forth. So that's the F term, the feed forward term, is again the derivative or the slope of the RC set point. So as this slope increases, you can see the feed forward value gets higher and higher. Then you have the pit error, which has that, that latency associated with it, the P term. The D term is opposing this. There's no relaxing of the D term in the, in the three, beta flight 3.5 and, and newer. But then the D term still has that latency. Again, this is opposing all motion. These two are acting together to, to kick you into the move. So really, you can see feed forward or the F term is replacing the D term kick so you have a more uh, a cleaner PID controller and then the F term is 
coming in again to help the P term and it's being done directly off the set point. So what are some of the advantages of feed forward? Why did the beta flight devs? And I wanted to do a big thank you to uh, eTracer or Bruce for um, doing all the feed forward coding and, and contributing that to the project. Um, this is his baby. So big shout out, thank you to him. The advantages are uh, it's adjustable on each access. So there's an F value on the roll, pitch, and y'all. Again, it's directly calculated off the RC rate. So derivative equals magnitude the slope. It's directly calculated off of that. There's no gyro noise influence. So notice on the D term here, how the D term kick has all these wigglies in it. That has to do with the gyro noise where the feed forward doesn't have, look how much smoother this is and, and how that operates with the feed forward value. Obviously if it's measured directly off of the RC rate, there's no gyro noise involved. There's no additional D-term latency, so this D-term kick has that additional D-term latency because the D-term is filtered, so this is after the D-term filtering. Uh, if you don't have D, which by default Betaflight doesn't have D on y'all, uh, it's there, you can turn it on, you could increase the, the gain. Uh, it's not recommended, but you could. Um, that, you know, you don't need it for having a faster stick response now with feed forward because there is a F value or a feed forward value on y'all independent of having a D term there or not. And it provides a better fundamental for future development. You can see it's just a lot cleaner approach to have that kick come directly from the RC rate and RC command versus using the D term and a D term kick. Okay, so moving on. So what is smart feed forward? Smart feed forward makes either feed forward or P term active in the PID sum. It's one or the other. It's not both. Without with smart feed forward turned off, uh, P term and feed forward add together, like we showed in the previous video. If you take the P term, the I term, if you add this, this, minus that, plus feed forward, you would get the value of the PID sum. With smart feed forward, it's either the P term or feed forward. You can see in this example here. Um, feed forward is, while the P term is higher than the feed forward value, it uses just what's the, in the P term. Um, if the feed forward value would happen to exceed the P term value, in this percentage essentially here, then feed forward would be used and then P term would be dropped to zero. So it's a one or the other. So smart feed forward can be used. Um, honestly, I, the first thing I think have come to mind is when you're going to do a plasma tune. A plasma tree tuning or, or tuning your quad for fundamentals, turn on smart feed forward. If you have feed forward values below 250, it really negates feed forward altogether. I'll show you that in a second. And then uh, then you can turn smart feed forward off and then feed forward would, would then activate again. Obviously the other way to do it is just set the feed forward gains to zero. Another thing that can be done is it can be used to have feed forward be your push pushing value into turns or moves exclusively instead of p-term. And we'll talk about you'd have to have higher than normal feed forward values to do that. So what would be a benefit of that? It'd be reduced latency because you don't have that gyro getting involved in that pit area with that latency involved. Another thing that it could be used for, and I haven't played with this too much, but if you are do a lot of smooth flying and every now and have some snap rolls or, or things of that nature, you could possibly tune your feed forward gains to be where while you're doing normal flying, you know, just kind of more fundamental slow turns, lefts, rights, things of that nature, you really have a set point weight of zero, right? Because if it's, uh, the, or an old set point weight of zero where it's using measurement, uh, it's just basically using the PID controller to, to make things move, P term, I term, D term, that's it. But then if you use, if you have your feed forward gains tuned, there's probably a, a fine threshold where you would do a sharp move, then the feed forward gain would take over and push it. I don't know if there's any real advantage to that, but it's something that, that came to mind. And last thing, if you are using smart feed forward, if you have it turned on, you have to have higher feed forward values. Am I testing anything above 200? Even 200 might not, you know, this is 250 and it's barely, it's only a couple little spots here in a sharp uh, roll move that it feed forward actually came into play and it's basically producing the same thing as the P term. So you're looking at, you know, pretty high feed forward values for it to, to do anything. 
So here's a, another example, just a normal move. Now this is at a uh, feed forward value of 155 on both, 155. So you can see with, with smart feed forward turned off, the feed forward and the P, the P term are active at the same time. They sum together al along with the I, the D, which is a negative value, uh, to give you your PID sum percentage. With smart feed forward turned on, you can see through this entire roll, it's not activated at all. Now when the feed forward value is opposing the P term, then it would be activated, and that's what's happening here. You can see down here, as I got the stick to full deflection, it kind of overshot it down here, and that's where it happened over here as well. And then the, the feed forward value is opposing the P term, so then it does activate. This just showing again, this is a feed forward value of 100 on the roll axis with smart feed forward turned on. It's not activated at all, really, except for this little spot where it's opposed. And then this is feed forward with 400 with smart feed forward turned on. And in that scenario, feed forward dominates and controls the entire uh, quad entering the roll. Do note the overshoot you get, you know, with either of these. When you're, when you're pushing your feed forward up, just like deset point weight, you're probably going to get overshoot on entering the move, which you can't really see, and maybe even exiting the move as well. Now you could mitigate it, the, the overshoot exiting the move with your transition value. Okay, well that's it. Thanks, and I hope this helped.